Saint Germain. Oh, with the soprano. Yeah, and they do this like strap on soprano thing that's killer. Because that way, if I'm going and I only need the alto, I just unstrap it. If I need both, I can travel with this really well. I love it. I love it. And That's I cool. Hey, we're... I haven't had any issue traveling. Oh. Say again. I haven't had any issue traveling with that. Oh, that's if, they, awesome. if they give me guff, I'm like, see, this detaches. I can get it in an overhead. It's no big deal. And I like that Sweet. it's modular. Okay, we're we're live. Awesome. We're live on Facebook. Looks like cool. Awesome. Should <laughs> should we begin or is are we still are we gonna continue the witty banter? I, I think we could begin. I think okay. we could do both. <laughs> we could do both. Continue. We can do Excellent. Both. Good idea. <laughs> All right, Rulon, let's let me let me let me start the witty banter by uh, by introducing you. And I know that you need no introduction because everyone knows you and everyone knows your great products. And um, and I mean, not not every my mom, my mom knows you, but, you know, all, everyone in our industry is aware of your your great products, you know, and my mom knows you because uh, because I've shown her your great products. But uh, so me and me and you, Rulon, we met at the uh, at the Navy Saxophone Symposium in D.C. And I really remember that one because people kept coming up to my booth and they're like, did you meet the new guy? Did you meet the new guy? And it's like, <laughs> well, there's a lot of new people here. And everybody said there's there's this the, he, the guy. And then they say kind of looks like you. Did you meet the guy? He says, oh, OK, he's bald and he's beautiful like me. And but the, every, people said that there was this guy who had a lot of a lot of energy and I had to see what it was. I had to see you, they'd say you have to see this guy that you got to meet this guy. And so so I got away from my booth and I walked over to your booth and there was literally this big there was just big crowd around your booth. And I'm standing in the back trying to see it. And you just had everybody captivated with your with your um, with your your well, with your products, but also or your I guess then it was just product but also with your spirit, you know, you just were really passionate and just, just super into what you were doing and showing, showing the key leads and showing how they worked. And, and, um, and it was, it was really great to see it. It was great to see somebody new and exciting. And, uh, and, and then I think at that show, me, you and I talked about the NAMM show. Yeah, man. And you had said, Oh, it's too late to get a booth. And, and, and we talked about it and I said, come, come, be at our booth, you know, because I just for to to be honest, at that time I I really liked your your spirit and your I said let's get this guy. He's got all this spirit. He's such a cool guy, you know. So so I, I thought it would be great to just have you in our booth and bring that spirit into our booth and and um, and I think a lot of people feel that way when they meet Rulon. They just want to be closer to you and be closer to the spirit that is you, and that's cool. Um, and then as I got to know you by way of an introduction, as I got to know you, I. I realized that you've been a repairer for a long time. And I mean, that's awesome. And then you, and you are a teacher and you're a player and it's like, you know, not only do you look like me, but we have parallel lives, you know? So, so, uh, so I'm, I'm really happy to know you. And, and it was only 2018 that we got to know each other, but I'm happy to know you and I'm happy to, to, to continue to, to, to get to know you. So, so today we're today's our product day, so we can talk selfishly about our products and how great they are, and that's what we want to do. So I'm going to turn this over to you, Rulon, if you want to say any more about yourself and and tell us about your products and what you're doing. Hey, thanks, Kurt. Man, it, um, first of all, thank you so much for two things. One, having me on today because I love hanging with you guys, um, but also um, I just want to thank you again because that invite to Nam was huge. It was wonderful. Cool. I mean, just started the business. We were starting from the starting block and meeting you and then having the chance to meet so many other people at your NAM booth. It was absolutely pivotal um, and a wonderful experience, wonderful networking, and of course, a great time to hang out with, with you and your team. So thanks twice for that. I really appreciate it. Um, you kind of, yeah, we did. We do kind of have these weird parallel li experiences, right? I didn't know that until yeah. we, I went to your Napper um, uh repair talk in Renton at Renton Technical College. And I didn't realize that you were like serious, you know, you were a player and you were doing all this stuff. And then you talked about your journey into repair uh, as a player. And I thought that was super fascinating. And so, um, yeah, I, I grew up, I'm a music geek at heart. Um, started playing sax when I was 10, deeply fell in love with the instrument. Um, 
and I started apprenticing and repair when I was 14. I was really lucky to apprentice with um, someone who really knew their craft. And then I uh, decided to leave repair and study music full time, uh, moved to Seattle, and then became a professional musician and teacher and, you know, kind of touring, doing all that. And then I got this kind of wild, this wild kick, uh, you know, am I going to do this? I got this idea. Am I really going to do this? Am I going to try to make this happen? And um, my wife and I, we looked at it like, you know what, this kind of feels right. feels like the right solution, feels like the right problem set to try to solve. And we think we can do it. Um, and then, you know, it's been it's been growing from there. And, and like you said, we've been adding more products and trying to listen to the users and the, the players and the teachers and repair techs and do better things, you know, and, and just continue expanding. Great. Great. It shows. Show us some of your, show us some of your products. Okay. Um, cool. I'm going to start for folks that don't know where the namesake comes from. Um, we've got key leaves, sax key props, um, and by themselves, they kind of look like dangly little leaf shapes. Um, and of course, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of puns. So um, I you know, call it key leaves because it leaves the keys open to dry after you play. So, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, come on. You didn't just get that. I never. You? No, I never. Got oh, that. my gosh. Come on. It's just great. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. OK, so, so leave keys open to dry with key leaves. Um, and they're just simple, soft, um, squishy silicone, very flexible. Um, I goofed around with materials for way too long, like a long time trying to find the right firmness, squishiness, but also what's going to be safe on any finish in any condition. You know, if a kid left this out on the um, play field during marching band, we wanted it to be super stable in ultraviolet light and harsh conditions. So the key leaves are, are pretty simple. Um, you just take the uh, little leaf shaped prop and all the closed keys are the ones that stick and rot after you play. You know, you got the, the gutter pad that always needs replacing. Mm. It rots out, it leather hardens, it cakes onto the tone hole. Um, so we got to do something about that. And it rots out because it's closed. But then you also have the C sharp. Sometimes that'll hesitate. It won't want to open uh, immediately. Uh, and then of course the notorious sticky G sharp. Right. We all we all know about going to play something in E major and suddenly it turns into minor because our G sharp is stuck. Um, so I wanted to try to solve all those things simply and quickly. So after you're done playing, you know, you can just slide this um, under either around the key cup like that. It can kind of caress the key cup, open up that C sharp. And then also by association that opens your your uh, G sharp. Because those two are, you know, in modern, all modern horns have that tab C sharp. So now you got two of the keys open to dry clean. You can come around here. It, it uh, you know, can rotate however you need for your particular key architecture. I like to just kind of scoop this around the post on this particular model. Never touches pad leather. Just opening up the three stickiest keys to dry in, you know, a matter of seconds. You just pop it in. And then because it's silicone, nothing sticks to it. So it, you know, it's never going to absorb oils, key oils, grime, um, moisture, and then become corrosive and abrasive. Uh, and the other cool thing is you can just then take them out safely, easily, and you're good to go. So just, you know, I, I, I really wanted something that was um, going to do the job, do it naturally, and just leave those keys open to dry safely and clean. And, and then I went on this like weird kick of like, well, okay, I got it for alto and I got it for tenor. Um, how am I going to do it for all the saxes? And then I went on to Barry, yeah. like it, it can't reach and I don't want to sell them separate because then people are going to lose them and then they're not going to use them. I got to have something to unite them. What can I do? What can I do? And then it's like, ha ha. So, so uh, we came up with this concept of the detachable strap so that you could take the strap, double it up and then just put it over onto one of the, the little leaf shaped props. And now you can get it at any distance for your barrier or even base sacks. And um, the shape I goofed around, I was sculpting things out of Sculpey and like chopping materials. You can, you can put it in just a little bit if you need. You can put it in sideways. I don't know if you can see that taper on my bald head, but it's actually got a, a, a gentle taper. 
Um, or you can arch it up. And if you arch it up, you get a really high propping motion. So between the, the versatility of the, you know, the, the shape and its function, you can use this device on, on any model, alto, tenor, uh, berry, and even bass sax. So that's so key. So can yeah. you, can you, I just, uh, when you installed those, are you putting them under the key arm itself? Oh yeah, man. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. So thanks for asking that. So I'll show, I'll see if I can get it real close up. So uh, depending on your make and model, right? Let me just look at the horn. So depending on your make and model, you might have a really short key arm like this and you can come in from the top and just caress the key cup, right? It's flexible. It'll expand to fit the key cup diameter. Um, let me show you a different one here. So this is, this is a Taiwanese bronze body horn. And you see how it has that kind of weird elbow in the C sharp. For this one, it's got the space and it has the height. I can come in here, just lift the key. And now I'm done there, right? I can, I can scoop to the depth that I need to, to raise it. Um, and because it's such soft stuff and it's only touching the key arm, even if it's like all the way under there, if I, if I cram it all the way to the thickest spot, it's still so soft and squishy. It's never going to bend keys. It's safe in the case and, and so on. So cool, nice. no, no key leaves products ever touch pad leather. They can, they can caress around key cups. They can scoop around posts or you can arch them. I'll see if this one's tall enough. I'll show you an example of the arch. Yeah, there we go. Can you see that one? Uh, let me see. Where am I? There we go. <laughs> So, so oh, that's yeah. an example oh, yeah. of that. And, you know, it's, it, I wanted to make it like basically a, a versatile shape and a versatile device so it could adapt. Um, and if you look at keyleaves.com slash help, we have like literally dozens and dozens of videos showing how to adapt it for your con 10 M or your busher big bell, you know, or big B. Um, Cause you know, some saxes have different configurations and it, and it even adapts to vintage horns too. How does it adapt? Can you tell us how it adapts to vintage horns or just just? Yeah, man. Um, so, so for the vintage, it depends on like, let's pick one specific. Could I, um, is it possible for me to share screen? Yeah. Cool. Um, let me quickly, cause I can go there and like, I, uh, I'll see. While uh, you're doing that Rulon, I just want to, I just want to say that, you know, the, 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 this this whole concept is just so it's really a good concept as as a repairer the, the concept of holding your keys open that's really a that's really a nice thing you know to to let the let the pad leather dry let everything uh let it let let the pads dry and let them and it, rather than holding them closed you know um or holding all of them closed uh, uh yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of controversy in what we do but i just think this concept that you're onto is really cool about holding the pads open, you know? So, so show us. Let's... I, I, I love it. And, and I actually would love to talk about that um, some more after this, but so, so this is our keyleaves.com slash help page. Again, just kind of shot, talks through wrapping, arching, and scooping. We've got squeaky, Sweet. the saxophone showing you how to use it, you know, cause everybody needs Ikea style instructions in their life. And uh and then this is again, just showing the advanced features for Barry. And this is how you do it, right? You detach the strap. You're gonna double up the strap onto one of the leaves and then you can use it at any distance. And so, so for like, here's a, uh, oh boy. Well, don't you love that? Um, so, so here, here it go. is, a, a Barry Sachs. This is a busher true tone right underneath because they don't have the tab, right? They don't have the tab to C sharp. So you can do that to get your G sharp. Um, oh, you were holding C sharp open there? Is that what you were doing? Uh, let me no. get a clear, a clear, like that's direct on a G sharp on an old con chewberry. Yep. Cool. Um, that's the underslung C sharp on the same con chewberry. That's one way you can do it. Um, it's got a carousel that I can't seem to stop. Someone really needs to redesign this website. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but that kind of shows some of these vintage approaches. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So, you know, kind of how it, how it can work there. 
Um, and typically when you've got an early vintage horn with the, the C sharp not tabbed, most players are not actually concerned wow, with, uh, with the C sharp as much as they are the G sharp. So, you know, you just kind of pick your, yeah. pick your cure um, there. But then like, you know, I've been collecting videos from players and if anybody has key leaves on a horn that's not on this list, let me know, send a video or a photo. Cause it's just, you know, showing, you know, all these different types of horns that uh, exactly how to adapt it best for your particular make and model, including the oh, wow. by Music Medic, which is Look a great nice. horn. Um, Can we so, see Mark well, Six, Rulon? Yeah, man. Uh, Let's see a Mark Six. Selmer Mark Six. Well, I just there's showed you on my tenor, um, but here, here's another one. Let's see if this works. Oh, this is a great resource, man. Yeah, that's this is my Selmer Mark Six. This is 1968. I'm just wrapping it around the E flat post and scooping around the key cup. That's it. <laughs> You know, it takes a lot of practice and time to use this product. It's extremely complicated and um, often, <laughs> no, and that's it. It's like four seconds and you're done. That's um, sweet. awesome. Yeah. And, and the thing, you know, Kurt, you mentioned kind of the approach and, and what, how you feel that it is the right approach, right? It's, it's a healthier yeah. for pads. Um, I'd love to talk about that and geek out on that because I get, I get so many questions about that. Cause I've, I've become known as kind of like the anti clamper guy. Um, like I, I really honestly am not a fan of key clamps. The okay. only kind of key clamps that I advocate are key clamps that are used to buy a professional repair tech to actually seat a pad if, if they want to use it, but they're using it for a limited period of time um, just to seat a pad and to get that, that pad, you know, uh, get that gentle pad seat impression. So, you know, for me, that's, that's a key clamp and <laughs> it's used by an expert for a limited duration of time to set a pad in its proper adjustment. And then after that, if the repair tech has done their job, right, that pad can stay level and healthy a long time. Um, and if we look at the, look at the saxophone itself, I mean, you know, the majority of the keys are open. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having keys open. They, they last longer, the leather doesn't age and harden as easy. And when leather gets hardened, it starts to um, become, you know, uh, more prone to leaks and micro leaks. Um, so oh, yeah. I, as a repair tech, I was like, you know, I, I joke with people like, hey, look at middle, look at low C, look at low C sharp, look at low E flat. You know, why is it that C sharp and E flat give us trouble, but, but C doesn't? You know, can, can you see the difference? <laughs> it's like, it's like right there. It's at the dirtiest, funkiest spot in the horn, gets tons of moisture and drip, just like these, but it stays healthy and it doesn't stick. And this pad rarely, rarely, rarely needs to be replaced. Whereas this one's riding out all the time. This one's giving you trouble. So for me as a, as a tech and as a player, I just, you know, I just saw like th this feels like the better approach to care for the pads, you know? And then as far as the clamps, um, you know, if you take, if you take, uh, wool and leather, both are, you know, permeable, they can absorb moisture. They're basically like sponges. And if you take that and you get it wet and you press it down onto a ring, you're going to have it dry compressed. If I did that with a sponge and I took a sponge and I put it on top of a Mason jar and I dried it and I pressed it. And then I take it off and it's dry and it's got that nice impression. I say, oh, wow, hey, look at that. It's got a pad seat. But the moment that thing gets any sort of moisture reactivity, it's gonna just totally expand and become hyper reactive. And so that's why I don't like key clamps on a daily use. Um, it, it hyper compresses the pad material, encouraging leather hardening. It hyper compresses the felt, encouraging a more clacky, loud, um, action um, and, a, and a, a playing field that I personally don't prefer. And I think most players don't prefer. No. Nope. And, and it, and it makes, it makes the, the, the pads hyper reactive to climate change rather than safe, stable, and less reactive. Sweet. And I'm sure I just pissed off a ton of people. 
<laughs> I'm sure there's people like, yes, son of a God. I've been using key claps for 70 years. And then I was like, okay, all right. I, but I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to say it straight about what I believe in, in my experience. And like, you know, that that's, that's how I feel about it. And I'm not saying you're a bad person. You know, if you, if this is working, you know, if, if working for you. But you, you are. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm but saying you, are, you, a better you knew person. you were bad. <laughs> you knew you were bad when you bought those key clamps. You knew there was something wrong with you, and your therapist told you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, Rulo. No, that's be- great. No, I I think that's a really that's that's good to hear that you're thinking about. Obviously, you're thinking about it because you created this product that goes that way. And I and I think those are all really, really valid points. You know, I I. I I, I, I agree with you as a repairer. I agree with a lot of that, what you just said, that, you know, um, and, and that kind of brought you into like that same thinking is what, like what brought you into the gap cap, right? Then that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that thought about like, okay. So, so when I started thinking about leaving keys open to dry, it dawned on me is like, wait a minute, is there any woodwind? besides saxophone that has a tradition of plugging the body tube closed after we play? Like, what, what the hell are we doing? <laughs> like, what, what? Is, what is the end plug about? Like, it's so dumb. It's, it's like, we wanted to, you know, we, we wanted to protect the octave key. Let me, let me remove my vent vine and, and gap cap here and, and go back to traditional saxophone tech. You know, we, it's, been, it's been used for hundreds of years just because we got this little dangly key. And, and we want to right. protect it, right? And, but it dawned on me, it's like, well, I want to vent it out. I want to like let the air flow. And sure, we want to protect that, but we got to get more airflow. So when we launched Key Leaves, we, we created a, um, a vent cap. This is our version one vent cap that uh, you know, had radical airflow, barely touched the tenon, let the tenon dry out clean so you don't get gunk growing on the, the neck socket. And we did this and I thought, man, we, we did it. We solved it. And I was all excited and, and people, people bought it and they dug it and they're like, man, I love it. But you know what? It doesn't fit my case. I'm like, what do you mean? It doesn't fit your case. Yeah, man. The, the end plug is that your vent cap's awesome. It doesn't fit my case. What, what do you mean? It doesn't, my, it does our end plug supposed to fit the case? Like it never dawned on me in all my time as a player and repair. And, and, it, and, it, and he's like, yeah, it doesn't fit my case. And so, so then I got thinking like, okay, we need to do something that fits any case and any sacks. So I was like buying up every end cap I could get and I was measuring, I was checking and, and you know, they're all over the map and some of them fit the sacks, some of them don't, some of them don't fit the case. And it dawned on me, it's like, wait a minute, we tried to solve a root problem with a brute brace that doesn't fit every case and every horn. And, and the real problem that we're trying to solve is not that the, it's not that the uh, it's not that the key's just magically going to bend. It's that the key is going to bend in a loose fitting case. Right, right, right. That's the root problem. It's not that the you know putting it in a case is going to magically bend it. It's the loose fitting case. And and so all of a sudden, like this new problem set that I'd never thought to think of, um, kind of was presented to me by player and repair tech feedback and. And so I, I created um, the gap cap and it, it has two components. Let me see if you can see this. So it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's got a flexible wall that it's a coil spring wall. And that means it can fit any diameter uh, sax variants, right? If you have a big bore, small bore, reverse neck socket, doesn't matter. It's gonna be able to compression fit safely into that sax and fit snug on the body tube. So now we have a good, clean, safe connection to the body tube. And then we're not worried about brute force bracing this thing because we're gonna expand or contract the, uh, the adjustment screw up or down to fit the case. So rather than worrying about brute force bracing the octave key, we're actually gonna engage the case structure. We're gonna engage the neck socket safely and and we can take up that slack pretty radically right like we can do some pretty extreme extension like if your case is looser than wow that, god god save your soul like you're like <laughs> something's wrong you know i i can't help you but you know at least we can help you that far right that's pretty crazy 
Um, <laughs> and, and, and then as we, we worked on it, we realized, oh, some, someone might want to like lock their position in. So then we added this little teardrop lock nut so that you can, nice. you can bring this down as I do this, like holding my Mark six in the midair. Sorry, man. I'm trying to be extra careful. So, so now I've, I've, I've essentially taken that lock nut down to secure that position and it's not going to turn on me and it can take, you know, it sets in the case solid. And now the body tube is held safe in the case structure. We've solved the root problem. The sax is not floating around in the case, risking damage to the octave key. Um, and then because I'm a freak about ventilation and, and leaving things open to dry, we also have the ventilation through the side and the center. So you get lots of good airflow into the body tube. And, and what I didn't actually realize as I was designing this um, until I you know, held it in my hand, it actually also acts as a shock absorber because of that flex wall. Let me get my hand out of the way. Once it's connected to the structure of the case, we now have a shock absorber so that if you're carrying your sacks and it falls or you know, gets a big whack, you're going to have some impact shock happening there. And that will help take that impact before that impact hits a hard end plug and transfers straight into your body and bends your body. Because as, as repair techs, you know, like fixing bent bodies, it's, it's not, you know, bent bodies are a major bummer. They're, they're, you know, they warp tone holes, they screw up alignments, they can bend, you know, rods and really mess up a horn and how it feels and plays. And um, it's not, you know, always a quick fix. Sometimes you got to take the horn apart and you got to really get in there and straighten up that body just right. So um, that shock absorbin, absorption aspect of the, the gap cap also really excited me because now there was finally something in there working with not only the case structure, but something between the hard case and the hard instrument to take impact force and kind of disperse it in, a, in an emergency whack or hit. As That's sweet. <laughs> you've got that yeah, for- oh, Go ahead, Rich. You've got that for alto antenna, Rulon? Um, yeah, yeah. So, so we've got it in alto antenna size. Um, I had cases around here. Uh, Oh, here. While you're looking for that, we also, oh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, so, so it, it comes um, as uh, alto or tenor size. I tried to make a one size fits all alto tenor and it was compromising too much of the benefits. Oh, there we go. Kurt's got two of them. They're Sweet. beautiful. Um, <laughs> and nice packaging. Thanks. Yeah, you know, I figured <laughs> I'm asking people to, to take a leap of faith on something that didn't exist before. I better make it look sharp. You know, <laughs> so well, well Rulon, so, tell us. Uh, tell I got a question here um, on the feed here about the vent find. Can you you had it on your tenor there? Can you talk oh, yeah. about that too? Yeah, man. Um, I'll show you on my. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, I've got it here. Let me grab. I my, mean, not to cut you off about the. No, it's all it's all good. The gap cap. Um, I feel like things just got darker. Can you see me? Okay. You're good. Okay. Um, so the vent fine, that's also something that I, that I started with as a custom fit product and, um, vent fine was based on the idea of, okay, we got alto tenor and berry sacks taken care of with the key leaves. That's going to stop sticky G sharp, C sharp, and E flat on alto tenor, berry and bass. What do we do about the soprano sax? So it was an evolutionary thing where I needed a solution for soprano and, and I, was, I was on a road trip and I kept thinking like, man, soprano's all over the map. The, the key mechs are crazy. They're curved, they're straight. I can't just do a one size works all kind of gentle key prop on the soprano. I need something different. And the tone holes are so tiny compared to the other saxes. What am I gonna do? And um, I was driving and, and all of a sudden I imagined like, okay, I got to get this, this pad off the tone hole. Got to get the pad off the tone hole. And all of a sudden I imagined this spider, like a spider with its legs over a tone hole and its body like arched up. And that's holding the pad open. 
And I was like, holy crap, babe, get, get it, get a piece of paper, get a pen. And I like pulled over on the highway and I'm like jotting it down. I'm like, what if a spider crawled on a tone hole and like opened it up? And I was all excited because this was the next variant of my key leaves journey. And, and then I, I tried spiders and that was stupid and it didn't work. And then I started cutting up like metal mini blinds and, and I was like, yeah, that kind of works, but that's gonna scrape the, the heck out of the tone holes. And so finally I, I, I ended up with this tech um, let me get real close. So it has a, it has a bump on top. Hmm. It has a triangle on bottom. Now this is our Soprano product. I'm showing it to you this way because you, it's big and you can see all the components. And, and this is part of the Soprano kit where it can adapt with, you know, the, the bottom uh, pieces can adapt to fit whatever maker model you have. And so then you go and you get your, your C sharp key, you open that up. You take your C-sharp leaf prop because, you know, key leaves, leaves, leaf keys open the dry. I love my puns, right? Sweet. Um, uh, and, and then you can just take this. Let me see if I can do this and in, with, the, with it making sense. There we go. Um, while it's open, you can just put it safely between. And then the down pressure locks it into place. And you see, you see how, let me move this around. I, I'm sorry, I can't do it for the camera. There we go, now I'm in. Um, so, so you see how the little bump hits the resonator? Oh uh, yeah, that's right. cool. That's like the back of the spider. <laughs> that's gonna safely hit the resonator, not the pad leather. And then that bottom triangle is nested safely down into the tone hole chimney. And because mm -hmm. this is a saw, you know, a, a gentle non-abrasive plastic, you know, you're not gonna have any kind of issues with your tone hole. Um, and what that does is now you've, you've opened up the pad, you've opened up the tone hole and it's now open to dry clean. And then you can go up here and you can, you know, put this in for the E flat. Um, and it comes on a string with a slip knot so you can extend the length however you need. And now you've got C sharp, G sharp by association and E flat open. So that's the tech behind the vent vine. Um, this is our Soprano product. Um, and, then, and then for the vent vine, um, where did I just set that? So the vent vine is that same technology, but, but micro. You see that, you see how the, it has the bump on top, triangle on bottom, and these series of little leaf props come down this vine. And in my case, I put the vine, you know, on my gap cap because it's nice and clean and easy and I can just put it on there. It can also, it also has a slip knot. You can wrap around the top of an end plug. If you, if you want to use an end plug, you can do that. Otherwise, sometimes players will just get the loop and they'll put it around their uh, uh, neck screw. Um, because all you're going to do is after you play, you swab your horn, you put on the key leaf sax key props on the bottom of your horn, and then you get your gap cap to protect your top of your horn. And you slide this in. And let me see if I can do this in midair. Not really. So I'm just gonna take the little triangle, right? I'm just holding the handle. And same idea as the Soprano, I just open up. I'm gonna do it with this hand, there we go. So I'm just opening up, placing it between the pad and the tone hole. And then the downforce of that, that key spring locks it into place. It never touches pad leather, right? And then I take up the slack and I continue down my, my high keys. Everything above high D, I can quickly leave open to dry. And, and that's that, you know, because what I realized was where do we have the most sticky rot? Where do we have the most repair? It's everything from high D up that's closed, right? The yeah. whole, everything above our left hand is closed keys and then plugged traditionally. That is no good, no good. We want it vented and we want it open. And then all these high keys, they stay healthier. They don't leak. You don't have to pay for as much repair and you don't get all that junk growing up there. And when you, when you use a vent vine um, every day after you play, all of a sudden your bis stops sticking, right? Because bisses will start sticking if you have a lot of gunk in your horn dripping down onto the upper left-hand stack, right? Mm -hmm. And so when I was testing this product, you know, I would, I, I gave some to some, some sax player testers and, and I said, what are you finding? Like, yeah, no, it's great for the high keys. I don't have that first touch, like to open up my palm keys. 
I love yeah. that. But, but man, my bis doesn't stick anymore. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, no, no, it just, it just stopped. Like it used to stick every now and then and it doesn't stick anymore. And, and of course the reason is the drips that happen are no longer filled with as much bacteria, yeast and fungus. That's then going to soak into your upper left hand, you know, stack pads and make them sticky. So it's just a better, cleaner solution. And unfortunately, because you know, sax manufacturers change their tone holes like they change their underwear. <laughs> they change tone holes all the time, man. They're looking for the secret sauce. Um, and, uh, and so what I've done is I've created a, a database of all the different makes and models. And so, so at keyleaves.com, if you want a vent vine, you tell us your make and model, answer a few questions about your sacks, and then we custom fit it for your particular make and model. Um, someday, <laughs> as I perfect that process, I want to try to get it out to more shops like the Sax Pro Shop, right? I want to get it out to you guys so that the players who are coming in, getting their horns fixed, you guys then are equipped you know, with that special information so you can custom fit for particular horns. I'm working on that. That's, that's coming. Awesome. We we don't want you to do that, Rulon, because we make our money from old rotten pads, and um, this video what? isn't even really live. It's just being played here. You're gonna cut that just, out. Yeah, we're gonna cut all of this out because we we you know this yeah rotten pads they smell like money. That's what we want. You know we we want to we want those pads to rot away so we can charge the big money to pull them out and change people's palm keys. You know. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. No, it, 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 it's really, it's really great, Rulon. It's, and so is, does that, does that pretty much encompass your whole line of what, is there any, is, is that what you have? And is there anything down the pike that you want to talk about or any? So there's a couple other things. Um, we talked about the Soprano. We talked about the vent vine. We talked about the gap cap. We talked about the key leaves. Those are the, those are the biggies. Okay. But, um, a, about a year ago, um, a repair tech came up to me at a trade show and, and he was, and he like pulled me aside. Like there was going to be some shady deal or something. He's like, Hey, we're on. Hey man, I love your products. We've been selling so many of them at our repair shop. We love it. We love it. Can you do something about powder paper? <laughs> I'm like, what, <laughs> what were you coming? What? He's like the dollar just, bill trick. Well, yeah. Like, like he, he just really hated powder paper. And he's like, and the dollar bill trick, it doesn't work, man. And I'm like, tell me about it. Yeah, it's like, you know, you do the dollar bill trick on a gig and you're like praying to the sax gods that you can get 20 minutes further into the gig. And then you do it five more times and maybe you get out a bigger, you know, denomination or whatever, but it's like, it doesn't work. Right? <laughs> and, and so, um, so he, he put that bug in my ear and I got thinking, I was like, man, what? I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, we're leaving keys open to dry. Do we really need to worry about that? And then like a week later, um, Ron Blake from the Saturday Night Live band, um, really fantastic tenor player, um, Barry player on the Saturday Night Live band. He, he called me up. I was like, man, I'm loving the vent vine. I'm loving this stuff. It's been a lifesaver. Can you do something for a pad dryer? I'm like, pad dryers? I don't know. I, you know, I haven't really spent a lot of time thinking about pad dryers. Why are you drying pads if you're leaving your keys open to dry? He's like, for me, it's just total peace of mind to know that I've totally dried the leather in the tone hole because sometimes I have to pack up my horns and they're shipped in crates. Um, you know, if, if I got to like play at the Grammys you know, or uh, the Oscars, you know, and he was talking about some really specific stuff where he wanted that peace of mind. So that's when I went down the rabbit hole for, for pad dryers and cleaning the tone hole and the pad. Um, so that's where I came up with the refreshingly honest pad dryer, Spitzman. <laughs> <laughs> and, I love that name. And, uh. and I, uh, you know, I just figured, you know, if anybody's going to worry about drying the pads, let's just, let's call it what it is. It's a spit sponge, <laughs> right? It's a spit sponge pad dryer. And um, basically I, I wanted to look at it. I wanted to get a shape that was super useful for sacks. Um, some of the things out there were um, uh, some of the feedback that I had heard was that it just wasn't real easy to use. So I, I did one that had a real big side for large, large um, sax keys, and then kind of a, a more precision side here and something that you can quickly like fold like a pizza and get in wherever you need to go. Um, and, and it's going to kind of do its job. And, and, you know, that was the shape idea. But then I also, I was working with this fabric um, 
supplier and I found this like super, super thin, super thin fabric um, that, that still is super absorbent. And so then I made one for uh, uh, woodwinds because, you know, like oboe players, they have the, the gurgly, nasty upper joint keys that they're always having to, you know, clean out during a performance. Otherwise they'll start to gurgle and also their trill keys can stick. So I wanted something super thin, super absorbent, a nice usable shape. And then I um, um, engineered a uh, texture into the bottom. I'm not sure we're in the light where you can see this. Very well, kind of if I turn it just right, you see that texture? Oh yeah, yep. So that's like a micro groove texture. And that micro groove texture, this is actually, it's, it's a saxophone and it's got flames and it's a fun little thing that I can't show you on the screen, but um, that micro groove texture also on the raw brass of a tone hole or the wood of a tone hole, um, it's gonna trap and remove the gunk better because it has that micro groove. So, so this is the spit sponge, um, the woodwind size. Um, some soprano players really prefer this, um, this size, even though it's the same, same here. Um, and then a sack size. Um, so will the wood, will the woodwind one, uh, Rulon work for clarinet too? Can oh, totally. That? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You know, clarinetists, um, I found don't suffer from sticky keys as much as oboe flute, get that kissy sound. You know, you're going to play flute and it's like, right. Uh, so, so this can help, um, you know, oboe players are nuts about it. Flute players are really digging it. Sax players are loving it. Clarinetists, I mean, I love, I love clarinet and, but good for you. <laughs> but, All right, you know, gentlemen. Sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Clarinetists for some reason, like they're pretty slow to adopt. Like they're not bleeding sure. edge. Like, yeah, let me take it. Like, hey, it's, it's six bucks. Let me try it. Like they're, they're slow movers. Like they got to wait, you know, they yeah. wait a bit. so, but they're, Matt, can you, can you mute Rulon when he's talking <laughs> like this? Just, I know you're watching that. Just mute him and, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll just say it was a technical problem. I know. <laughs> I'm not, Go ahead. I love playing this. I just, you know, Hey, we're talking candid, but, yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's the spit sponge. And then um, coming up, um, we've got something really cool uh, coming up for oboe. Uh, we're finding a lot of people really loving the, the spit sponge in the oboe community. And so I've got something that's coming out for oboe that is going to be potentially, I hope they feel a game changer. We're starting to alpha test that with some um, pretty fantastic oboe players and, and get their feedback before we finally release it. Um, and then, and yeah, that's kind of what's cooking. Cool. Great. Great. Yeah, I've got... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I've getting, I'm looking at the feed and people are saying how great they like the, the spit sponge for, for clarinets and oboes. That's oh, awesome. sweet. That's fantastic. Yes. Hey, hey, yes. I can't see the feed. If are you, you <laughs> love it for clarinet, will you do me a favor? If you love this on clarinet, oboe, anything, if you love it on anything, please go find a place to leave a review. Because I find that like, like if, if it shows up with keywords like clarinet, clarinet pad dryer, you know, it helps so much. If you're digging this for your, for your various instruments, please, please, please leave a review. It really helps spread the word. We're, we're in the age of algorithmic living. You know, we don't know how to drive our cars without, you know, Google telling us the best way anymore. So, so, you know, it really helps other people say like, oh, well, hey, he loves it on his clarinet. I better try it. So thank you. I'm, I'm, Glad to hear that. And I apologize for saying that clarinets are slow adopting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just lost your one clarinet guy. He was like, oh, I got to see Rulon. And then you're like, well, clarinets are kind of slow. And, you know, they're usually, they have a lot of problems in life. <laughs> no, I did not no, say no. that, man. You did not say that. You did not say that. No, that's no. trombone players. Come on, let's get real. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Oh, boy. We can now say that, though. Pick, now we you're picking that. on people who can't defend themselves. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's stop this. Uh, Rulon, I, I, I think we, we saw all your products now and, uh, and I'm, I just want to, I want to, I want to thank you for coming out and, um, and, and sharing with us your products and, and we've only known each other a few years now, but I look forward to a, a, a long relationship with you and, and uh, your products, they, they sell great at our company and, um, and, and that's really helpful. So thank you for making great products that, that, that work and sell great and, and, and do exactly what they say. And you're really helping out, I think, the saxophone community by helping us to have horns that work 
longer and play better. So thank you. Thanks for all you do. And thanks yeah. for coming out here today. And for the people that are watching, thank you for checking us out. Thanks for coming out to another product session. Um, most of the products that Rulon talked about are available uh, either through Music Medic or you can get them directly from keyleaves.com, right? Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Well, Sweet. thank you. Thanks, Rulon. Thanks, thank Rich. You, Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Rulon. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Thank you, guys.